some of you will remember many years ago, a programme on the radio called Listen With Mother. After the initial, hello everybody, they went on to say, are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Coming to share my thoughts with you this morning on today's readings, I really feel like beginning with those same words, as there is so, so much to think about in those chapters from Mark 11, verse 20, through to chapter 13, verse 37. So to stop you dashing off to get a cup of coffee or even deciding to leave, I reassure you that I am just going to share with you just three thoughts. Jesus is talking to his disciples, knowing what he's going to face in Jerusalem later on. My first thought comes from chapter 11, where Jesus tells his disciples the parable of a withered fig tree. And almost immediately, we read these words, have faith in God. That really made me stop, have faith in God. Jesus says that our faith should be, the, be so strong that we can be able to really seem impossible. His example is that if anyone says to a mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, if he believes in his heart that that is possible, then it will happen. Such faith will be answered through their prayers, he tells the disciples. Sometimes though, for many of us, our prayers seem to go unanswered. And we either think we haven't used the right words, or even that we have so sinned that God is angry with us for want of a better word. That is certainly how I have felt on many occasions in the past. But now, as I have grown older, and hopefully a little wiser, I realise that God sees the bigger picture and that he will not only know what to, when to answer, but also what is the right time for him to do so. Also, he might not answer in the way we are hoping, because he knows what is best for us and for the plans that he has made for us. Is our faith strong enough to accept those thoughts? As Jesus said, have faith in God. The next part that made me stop and think more deeply was the parable of the wicked tenants of a vineyard to be found at the beginning of chapter 12. It is a well-known parable, but it is Jesus telling how the people reject the Son of God himself. He is the cornerstone that is going to be rejected by most of the people, particularly the leaders. The cornerstone was an essential part of constructing a strong and lasting building. A wonderful way of telling his listeners that even though they are planning to put him to death, he will have already laid the foundation for the spread of the gospel of God's love and forgiveness. It would be so strong, much stronger than could be imagined by those who did not even want to try and understand. And for a last thought, I looked at the last part of chapter 12, verses 41 to 44, the story of the widow's might. Again, a well-known parable, but so relevant to what is happening in that, these times. So many people losing their jobs and the anxious thoughts of what the future may hold. But hasn't it been wonderful how so many people have tried to help in so many different ways from donating large sums of money to material necess necessities through giving to food banks. No matter how large or how small the gifts have been, it has eased the burden of so many. I did hear one person say that he could only give a very small gift of money as the threat of, threat of losing his job was a very real and imminent prospect. But, you know, reading that story of the widow's might, he gave a much bigger gift in God's eyes. 
But do you know what has really made me appreciate the thoughts that I have shared with you today? Is that in most of these chapters, I see the way that Jesus was able to put his point over in the most imaginative stories. Parables that people of that time would relate to, using situations that they would understand. Yes, we do need to hear and learn some theology to enable us to come to a better understanding of scripture. Not so deep that it doesn't help us to move forward in order that we come to have that closer relationship with our God. But to finish, reading not just those chapters for today, but for a long while I have so often thought of the wonderful way in which Jesus answers so many questions and responds to so many underlying threats. Not only are his listeners able to understand, but he's also able to silence his critics. He not only knows when to speak with compassion and understanding, but also when to assert his power and his authority. I always hope, sometimes giving up a quick silent prayer, that if I can answer questions that are sometimes thrown at me quite unexpectedly in such a way as to be understood and to be relevant to the times and circumstances of the one posing that question. But again, for me, those four words that Jesus spoke are the ones I want and I need to repeat over and over again. Have faith in God. Loving God, so often we have not kept faith with you, sometimes falling into despair or even becoming cynical because we think that you do not hear us. Sometimes we are so busy that we leave no time to reflect on all that we have been taught and believe. Please forgive us. Be with us as we journey on, remembering all your promise that you are with us always. When given the opportunity to share our faith, may we do so with words that are helpful and relevant. And this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good night, goodbye and God bless until we meet again.